welcome back, knuckleheads. I am Lupine Fiasco. This is Daily Fab Gameplay, and today we are playing KO against Dorinthia. For anyone who is new to the channel, welcome to the jungle. What we do here is review replays of games that I played on the Talishar client days or weeks ago, after enough time has passed that I lose my bias and can more objectively judge the quality of my play. I will talk through turn cycles and give my thoughts on the line I would take now compared to the line I took then at the time of recording. We either learn from my mistakes or reinforce good play patterns with the overall goal of tightening and optimizing our gameplay in the future to take down paper events like the upcoming ProQuest season and, most importantly, walk away with that shiny, shiny cardboard. If you would like to check out the list I'm playing here, or try it for yourself on Talishar, the Fabry deck link is available in the video description below. While you're down there, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to my channel. A YouTube subscription is the best free way to support me and to make sure that you see daily fab gameplay in your video feed five days a week. The best paid way to support me is through Patreon, and a Patreon link is also in the video description. A Patreon subscription will get you access to the DFG Discord. At higher tiers, your name will appear in every DFG video. You'll get bonus DFG content every week, and there are even more benefits to come. Daily Fab gameplay will always be free five days a week, so for those who can afford to support me, I truly appreciate it. Let's talk about the KO Dorinthia matchup and what we're sideboarding and why. As a brief disclaimer, my list online has changed ever so slightly from what you play here. We are following uh, Peter Ward's second place Pro Tour list very closely. So if you see new or unfamiliar cards in the current list compared to this video, that would be why. That said, I do still believe we can make decent uh, comparisons between the two decks and that any gameplay analysis you see here is just good to have going forward. Dorinthia has changed quite a bit since this game was recorded. Uh, Hatchet's Dory really is the more popular build these days. Uh, Dorinthia more or less cosplaying as Kasai. In that she has two axes, she has a lot of ways to give go again. Blade Runner, take it on the chin, glint the Quicksilver. But depending on the Dory build, she may also have cards like Steel Blade Supremacy, or Singing Steel Blade. So Dory can be very difficult to play around. As far as sideboarding goes, without having prior knowledge of what your Dorinthia is doing, at least at the time this video was recorded, my thought was, let's assume she's Dawn Blade. Going forward, I think it is more correct to assume that she is Hatchet's. And there are a few key differences between those two sideboard plans. The main one being that against hatchets, you don't want to block very much, or at least you can run cards like bear fangs, which we currently have in the sideboard, because you aren't as concerned with blocking. If you know that your Dory is Dawnblade, you probably want to board out your bear fangs. You probably don't want to run nine copies of pulping or wild ride because you want to be able to reset the Dawnblade when the opportunity presents itself. But against Hatchet, run your go-again cards, maybe not your pulpings, just based on the number of D-reacts they play. Fate for scene, sink below, hold the line. Um, but Bear Fangs, yes. Wild Rides, yes. You're really a lot less concerned with blocking as you are about outvaluing them turn to turn and making sure that you have go again, or at least agility, for your Blood Rush Bellow turns. The card image not found in this video is Wrecker Romp. Um, Talishar at this point has fixed that issue, but if we ever come across image not found, it is blue Wrecker Romp. Because we're sideboarding for Dawnblade, we are putting in our Humbles, being able to turn off Dory's ability to get a second attack with the Dawnblade will highly incentivize her to block. That said, I'm a lot lower on Disruption versus Warrior now than I was at the time this game was recorded. 
They have so much armor. They have so much armor. They can play effectively off of low count hands. Uh, the Dawnblade, maybe not so much, but Hatchets in particular, I actually am considering boarding out Send Packing because 3 for 6 is a bad rate, and it usually doesn't affect them very much. Command and Conquer and Humble, if you are still playing it, I believe make the cut. Based on being 2 cost 6s, they fit very well into our um, preferred turn cycle of 2 for 6 go again, Claw, 2 for 6 finisher. But if you do use my current sideboard guide and find that you are not running scent packings, that's why. Against Hatchet Story, we are just playing clean, efficient turn cycles. We are very likely not blocking the first Hatchet. We are blocking the second Hatchet that turns off the reprise effect of Glint the Quicksilver. And it makes sure that we are getting full value out of our block cards because the second Hatchet will attack for three where the first hatchet only attacked for two. Against Dawnblade Dory, we are going to need to do math to determine the maximum damage output her hand could produce and decide if we want to block that. Um, if we think that we can put our entire hand in front of the Dawnblade and fully block it out, then we will probably do that to prevent it from gaining counters. If we think that there is a uh, high possibility of getting blown out by reactions from hand. We probably won't. We just want to race. Um, we can certainly high roll Dory, but very likely we will need to make some attempt to control the Dawnblade because if the Dawnblade gets too big, we are going to find ourselves with hands that don't block and we are going to uh, just very quickly die. We are not playing No Fear in this list. Uh, the current list does play it. That said, I still don't think we need No Fear against Dorinthia, um, especially now that most of them are on hatchets. Good flesh bag use is important in this matchup, knowing when we can catch Dory without the ability to give her hatchet go again if we hit, the Dawnblade go again if we hit, the Dawnblade bonus power that would get her over blocks, Usually you do want to save Flesh Bag for when you're attempting to reset the Dawnblade or on Hatchets when you know that the Dory is relying on Go Again, either from Blade Runner or Glint, or when she has a low card count and you know that getting a card from her hand will prevent her from continuing to attack with the Hatchets, especially if you think she might have Hit and Run. So... It's a pretty variable mashup. It's hard to really get into the specifics without seeing what kind of Dory we're playing against. So let's submit deck and see if we can't improve our gameplay. We queue into a Dawnblade Dory. So putting her first, uh, very effective. We are going to hopefully just put nine defense power in front of the Dawnblade and have that be enough. As it is, she could very easily get over this, um, but she does not, so we just get to uh, come back to our turn. Trying a handful of reds here is a little unfortunate. Um, kind of don't have a better line than like E Strike for seven, bottom a Savage Feast, and Arsenal a Wild Ride. Uh, I do like doing that here. Uh, it's pretty underwhelming, but. We don't have a better line. Like, we could pitch two reds for a wild ride, but we're just hoping to upgrade one of the cards in our hand as opposed to taking the E-Strike line. We know that we are pushing seven damage. We know that a red wild ride is going into our arsenal, and we know that we are keeping a three block in our hand. So to me, that is much better than this which is more damage this turn cycle. Um, we are going to get to pitch reincarnate to claw, but we don't have an arsenal, which I think is much worse. And we are losing go again from our deck, which we really want to have. All of KO's best turn cycles happen with go again. Warrior's Valor here, uh, putting the Dawnblade up to six. If this hits, it gains go again. We could probably block this out, but really this hand doesn't block well. 
So what I may want to do here is take this six, put Smash Instinct in front of the next Dawnblade attack, and then on my turn, uh, play Humble, Pitch Reckless Swing, Arsenal Pulping. This I'm setting up to Reckless Swing? I don't think that is a good idea at all. Uh, we are gonna get to Arsenal this Yellow Pulping, but I mean, we're not giving the Dawnblade counters, but this is, I think, a really, really sloppy line. Um, I would have much rather just done more damage on my turn. Maybe let the Dawnblade get a counter, but overall, um, I don't think that was good. Here we are in a position where we would like to block with Cast Bones. We want to play Blood Rush Bellow, Pitch Pulping, and discard Beast Within. We'll draw three cards. We have our Tunic available, so we should have a pretty good turn cycle lined up. Um, I think blocking the first Dawnblade is always wrong. I would like to block the second one to play around Glint the Quicksilver. Now in this case, the Dawnblade already has go again, so Dory wouldn't necessarily need to play Glint, but um, just in general, I am of the opinion that against Dawnblade Dory, blocking the second sword is better than blocking the first one. Let's see if Dory pitches into Grains, and she does, giving up a sink below. Which seems pretty good for us, considering that we have a pulping in our arsenal. Um, considering that we do not currently have go again, we are taking a chance by playing the Pulping. If this is another D-React in Dory's arsenal, then our turn just ends. I think what will be a better choice is to lead with Bandable Claw, pitching our Pound Town, and we can see what Dory does with that. Uh, this, okay, we are going to undo. I think that's a very aggressive line. It's very high risk. And I don't feel good about doing that. Uh, swing big for 10. I think it's fine if we play the pulping there. I mean, really the only uh, case scenario. We could get a little lucky. We could use our tunic, play the pulping, discard humble, draw a blue, come in for swing big. But I think uh, that turn cycle was okay. That's a lie. I would have attacked with the pulp in there and used Tunic to pay for it. Um, we draw a card, we discard one of our good reds. Maybe the Dory has the defense reaction and our turn ends, but what is more likely to happen is that we uh, get to follow pulping for seven with either disruption in the form of humble or a ton of damage in the form of swing big. No, of course, we can see that we would have drawn Red Assault and Battery, which would have been absolutely terrible for us, but I still think that was the right call. We should have done Claw Pulping instead of Claw Swing Big. Moving forward, Dawnblade for six with Go Again. If this hits, the Dory is going to draw cards. We can think about the absolute worst case scenario, which would be Singing Steel Blade from Arsenal to find Iron Song Response. The most damage that this Dawnblade could deal is 10 if we block. If we don't block, then um, Dory is very unlikely to respond. But I do want to block this. I do want to stop Dory from getting all of that value. So we can put our entire hand on the table. Uh, that would be an effective way to stop the Dawnblade from hitting. We could block for 10 with Send Packing, Humble, Assault and Battery, and Bone Breaker. That gives us a Might. Um, I want to make sure I know 
what I do here. Are you going to, we have a pulping and arsenal. So I like blocking with send packing A and B, humble and bone breaker. We cover 10, which is the absolute worst case scenario. We prevent Dory from drawing a card. We prevent her from getting an additional attack. Um, and on our turn, we pitch our blue, play our pulping, and use our tunic to work a claw in as well. I think that is an excellent line. I don't know what this is. Um, a strictly worse line of play because we don't get to work a claw into our turn. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Should not have blocked with the blue. I should have blocked with the yellow instead and gotten my tunic value. It was very strange. I don't know why I did that. Uh, Iron Song Determination, we're just not gonna block anything. Um, honestly, what we should do here is just discard windup at the end of Dory's turn, make an agility, then play Blood Rush by pitching a blue and discarding a blue. Um, we can let Dory deal damage here. We can let Dory get a counter on the Dawn Blade. We're about to have a pretty big turn. Um, and that's totally fine to just tank a bunch of damage. We have a life to give. Dawnblade with a counter is definitely scarier than Dawnblade with no counter, but it isn't so much scarier. We're about to put on a lot of pressure. We should definitely have discarded wind up there. Um, what we will do instead, this is a very interesting turn. So we could claw four, six, go again, discard wind up to make agility, then play cast bones. We could play Savage Beatdown, pitching Cast Bones, and discarding Agile Windup. That is the definitely higher value play. Claw, discard Windup, Cast Bones is about 12 value. A few more depending on how you value agility. And we put a Savage Beatdown into Arsenal, which is really strong. That said, we are giving Dory a five card hand and kind of putting the onus on her. Maybe she has a really explosive turn, maybe she doesn't. If this is like glistening Steel Blade, Steel Blade Supremacy, then I feel really bad about not having pressured her the turn prior. So I think what I actually want to do here Considering that it was a mistake to not discard this windup on our last turn, I think beat down for 14 is the correct choice. And we are going to pitch the cast bones to play, uh, to pay for the beat down. Choosing to go for the claw line instead. I think this is lower value. It definitely sets up for something very impressive. We are leveraging the fact that we still have our flash bag, so Dory is not going to get to put some massive, incredibly scary turn together. But I think overall, we should have just hit her for 14. Doing the preemptive flash bag just to make sure that this turn is not as bad as it possibly could be. We aren't defending from hand, meaning that does Clint the Quicksilver does not get additional value from her prize. And on blade for four is not something that we're gonna block. We are gonna keep the entire hand this time. We don't need to discard a windup because we already have agility. We have multiple blues, which will pay for much of our turn. Considering that we have a beat down in arsenal, we could Beat down with go again. We could claw with go again. Between two swing bigs, I'm probably not even looking to beat down this turn. Um, Savage beat down is very impressive, but what we can do instead, well, let's see. 
So we swing big for, oh goodness, how many mites do we have? Um, how much is this swing big attacking for? So we swing big for 16 go again. This is definitely the right call. After this swing big, we have two options. The first is that we pitch our reincarnate to play Savage Beatdown. We discard our second swing big and Beatdown comes in for 14. The other line would be to uh, pitch reincarnate to claw for five go again. Then we use our tunic to pay for second swing big for 10. So that not only is it more value overall, uh, the two of them come for 15 instead of 14, but we also keep Savage Beatdown in Arsenal uh, for future turns. So Beatdown Claw, or uh, Swing Big Claw, Swing Big. Definitely the correct line here, putting a lot of pressure on Dory. That is, in fact, what we choose to do. Dory has four life. She could technically survive the turn. Um, if this is a D-react, it is not. Uh, so a, a pretty impressive ending to that game. But I was really happy to review this one. I remember thinking this game was a bit of a high roll, and we certainly had two, uh, a, a solid end to the game. But definitely the turn before that, and even the turn before that, really seeing like, we lost a lot of value. We somehow, for some reason, kept a yellow instead of blue and missed getting tunic value out of working a claw into a pulping turn. We didn't discard an agile windup ahead of a blood rush bellow that would have been really good. Um, just a, a few very obvious value leaks that I'm pretty sad that I didn't catch in the moment. But at least catching them on the back end here really shows this game is a few weeks old and, and I really have come quite a ways as a KO player. So hopefully you learned something from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if so, be sure to assault and batter that like button. My comments are always open for any questions or feedback. Again, if you've not already done so, please consider a YouTube subscription. It's free. It helps me out. But no matter what you do, Catch me back here next week for more daily fab gameplay. And until then, take care.